Hello Calc Kids, this is Mr. Bean. Welcome back to another lesson in calculus. And today we're going to continue on working with volumes of a solid of revolution where we revolve things around and we're going to stick with washer method. And as a reminder, what's washer method? That's when you have a cross section that's a circle with a gap in the middle. So you have, if you, you take the solid and you cut it up, slice it down the middle, you have this area on the outside, but then there's an opening in the middle. So this is what we did last time. We took pi r squared minus little r squared. We had the big radius squared minus the little radius squared. And then of course the pi makes it the area of each circle. So this is what we did our, in our last lesson. So if you have no idea what I'm talking about, then you're watching the wrong lesson. You gotta go back one to be able to follow what we're doing. Today, we're going to take these revolutions and instead of doing it around the x or y axis down here we are now going to do it around a new line so on this first problem let's do it around the line y equals two so draw yourself like a dashed line at y equals two and we're revolving this thing this direction that's how we're going to be revolving it so let's take our area that's enclosed by the square root of x and uh, x squared and we need to create a mirror image so let's come up here and try to create a mirror image of this thing. What's that gonna look like? So an upside down parabola would be here. Oh, and it's all the way, it's two away, so I need to start two away here. So something like this. There's my upside down parabola, and then there's the square root going the other, other direction. So there is my mirror image. That's not great, but it's good enough for what we're trying to do. And then let's revolve it. So how do we revolve it? We create like these little circles, oval shape type thing. So do the best you can with that, and show that you're revolving it both directions. And then the right side here, you do that here as well. Hopefully you can visualize what in the world this is doing. It's a very, uh, it's a big shape that goes around a circle with a huge hole in the middle here. See, this whole thing is empty on both sides. It would it'd be just open it up. You could look straight through it. So that's our volume. Now let's figure out how to set up our equations. I'm gonna draw a line like this. I would like you to as well, because I'm gonna show you two different directions, two different ways of setting this up. So the first way is gonna be how most textbooks will do it. Uh, and I'm going to show you a second way that I believe is actually easier. Uh, so let's do start off with our pi, and then what's the low x value? We're going from 0 to 1, so we're take, focusing in on this area that we started with. So we're going from 0 to 1, and then we have the big radius squared minus the little radius squared with respect to x. Do not forget the pi. Do not forget the pi. We have a pi right there. It needs to be in front. That's a common mistake. You start setting these things up with the radius squared and you forgot, oh yeah, circles, pi r squared, not just an r squared. So we start with the big radius. So the big radius is starting right here in the middle and you go to the outside of the object, which is down here to that point. So that's my big r. So what is that distance? Well, I know that this distance right here is, what is that? That's the x squared, right? That distance is x squared. Well, if that distance is x squared, then the this thing in red, that is the whole thing, which is two minus x squared. So that's how you get the big radius. Now, what about the little radius? The little radius will, let's draw this again. I'm gonna go from there to there. That was not a straight line. We're pretending like it is. So I need that distance. Again, I don't know that distance, but I do know the whole thing. The whole thing is two. So I could take two and then subtract this down here. What is that? That is the square root of x right there. So I subtract the square root of x. And there's my setup. So that's finding the volume. And again, yes, we'd have to, we'd probably use a calculator on this one because uh, that's a lot of multiplying out. Just depends on what the problem is. So let me show you a different way of doing this that may be a bit easier for you. I do not want to confuse you, so you can do whichever way makes sense. And if what I just told you makes total sense, then maybe you don't even care to watch this part. But I'm telling you, for most kids, this is actually easier. So we're going to still set this up the same way. We're doing it from 0 to 1. But we're going to now, we, I've done this before, we're going to now, instead of saying that this is the line y equals 2, we're going to shift it down 2. I'm going to subtract 2 all the way down and so that this now becomes the x-axis. So shift everything down two units. So that means my new equation here is going to be y equals the square root of x minus two because I shifted everything down. And this one is now y equals x squared minus two because I shifted everything down. Now I can do it exactly like we did in the last lesson. These two equations, we shifted it down two so it's now the x-axis and we just start from there. So think of this as the x-axis. What is it to the outside? To that outside is that graph, and that graph is x squared minus two. So I'm going to write 
the big radius squared minus the little radius squared with respect to x. And the big radius squared is this line right here, right, that line. So that one is x squared minus 2. And then we subtract the little radius. And the little radius, I'll show you in here, is to that line. So we're going from the x-axis to that square root curve. And the square root is square root of x minus 2. So I say square root of x minus 2. Now, if you look at these, they're different, right? They're, those two answers are different. We have 2 minus x squared quantity squared, and here we have x squared minus 2 quantity squared. But if you remember, a couple lessons ago, I taught this about, I reminded you that if you have 5 minus 3 and square it, that's exactly the same thing as 3 minus 5 squared. When you square something, the sign won't matter. It will always become positive. So both of these will give you the correct answer. So you're allowed to either just vertically shift it or you look at it right from the line y equals 2 and kind of figure out what is that distance. How to get the distance of the whole thing minus what you didn't use. All right, let's do one more of these. This time it'll be a vertical line, x equals negative 1. Let's go ahead and draw a vertical line at x equals negative 1. I like to make, keep them dashed to remind me that it's actually not part of the graph. It just helps me know what it is. And we're doing this area. And then since we're doing it around the x uh, x equals negative 1 line, that's kind of similar to doing it around a y-axis. It's a vertical line that we're revolving around. So we need to have these equation in terms of y. So let's solve this one if in terms of y. I'd get uh, y minus 1 equals x squared. Square root both sides, you get y minus 1 equals x. And I could take plus or minus, except that I already know that this is the positive side. So I don't need the plus or minus, I just need the positive square root of y minus 1. So that's this curved line. And now the straight line here, if I subtract 1, y minus 1, and then divide by 2, I get this fraction. Or you could write it as y over 2 minus 1 half. All right, so now there's my two equations. I'm going to draw a line here to show you how to set up both versions. Oh, I better, let's finish drawing my graph. I got to do the mirror image over here. So let me fast forward to that. All right, not perfect, but good enough. And then we're going to have you revolve it around this direction. And, oh, that was bad. You revolve it like that. And then the, whoa, this is a big circle. This is hard. So that's why I do little tick marks, because then it's more forgiving when I mess up. I can just kind of squiggle it out. Okay. Oh, that's hard. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So big hole on this one as well. Then when we're revolving it around this line, x equals negative 1. So let's start this off. What do we got going here? We've got that the volume is going to be pi r squared for the area of a circle, and then we're integrating it from, remember this is with respect to y. So we start at the bottom, which is a y equals 1 value, 1, and then we go to the top of it, and the top is a y value of 5, and then I'm going to have the big radius squared minus the little radius squared, all with respect to y. So the big radius is right here, it's from this line to the outside of the object, to right there. So what is that? Well, I know from here, from the, the y-axis to the curve, that's this, square root of y minus 1. But this part right here, that distance is 1. So it's 1 plus the square root of y minus 1. So we go 1 plus the square root of y minus 1. And then the other one, I'll do this one in blue, that distance right there is 1 plus, and then this is that weird fraction there, y minus 1 over 2. So we say 1 plus plus y minus 1 over 2. And that's, we're subtracting that, that we have a minus, that we're subtracting this because that's the little radius where there is a gap. In, there's a hole in this three-dimensional object. Okay, so that's the volume. That's how you set it up. And you could use a calculator to evaluate it from there. Let me just show you the other direction where if you just shift everything to get the exactly the same answer. So we go from 1 to 5. And now all I'm doing is I'm going to shift this whole thing to the right one. So I'm going to add 1 to everything. So my new equations, I'm going to write it, uh, ah, you're just doing this. You're just taking a plus one to that. And then for this one, you're doing a plus one. That's it. You just take these equations and add one to them. That's all you have to do. So now that this is the x axis, you have to think this is actually the x axis now. And these curves are these things with a plus one on them. You don't have to, you're, you've already shifted it. You don't have to worry about any type of other line because it's now the x axis. So we say big R squared minus little r squared with respect to y. And so now what's the big radius from the, from the, I said y axis. I mean, I said x axis. I meant y axis, sorry. From the y axis to the outside, uh, that is the curve one, this one, square root of y minus one. 
square root of y minus 1 plus 1, because I added 1 for shifting it. And then the, the line is y minus 1 over 2 plus 1, because I added 1 because I shifted it. And then that's it. There's, there is your setup. And you can see it's actually the same thing as the one up above. So whichever one you're more comfortable with, just shifting it right off the bat, shift it back to the y-axis or the x-axis, uh, and then work from there. But just remember, you have to add or subtract onto the equations that you already came up with. All right, now this entire lesson with this packet, you're going to have a lot of review things, including on the mastery checks. You'll have review from other things of unit eight. You got to find the area. You got to do perpendicular cross sections just to kind of keep it straight because that's one of the hardest things to do is remembering when you use each of these different formulas that we've come up with. So you really got to understand that well. So where I'm throwing all of it out at you at this lesson, and that's actually a really good way to review before you're getting ready for the test. So to my BC kids, you're done. Rock the mastery check, BC kids. I'll see you back in the next lesson. You got one more before you're done with unit eight. AB kids, stick around for just a minute. I want to say some parting words to you and give you some recommendations of how to get ready for this AP exam. So here's what I would tell you to do. Practice exams. Do as many as you can. Between now and the time you take the AP exam, do as many practice exams as you can and time yourself. Stick to a, the time you're supposed to stick to and don't give yourself more time. That's going to help you quite a bit. My suggestion, if you don't have a way of getting any your hands on any practice exams, you may go online and buy a Barron's AP re, uh, review book for calculus, like a cram book uh, or Princeton review. Those are the two that are my favorite, but your teachers might have some other suggestions. Uh, or maybe you already have some. So those have really good tests in the back of them use those, time yourself. Uh, that's a great way to prepare. Then you take those exams and correct your errors. Go through, figure out what you missed and what is uh, going on and why you missed them. But as you do that, don't get stressed out about the ones that are really hard. If you have across ones that are really hard, you know, you have to think about, well, what's your goal here? You're not going to get 100%. And the reason I can say that is because last year, there was only two kids who got 100%. Okay, two kids out of hundreds of thousands of kids who took the AP exam, the Calc AP exam, only two got 100. Don't worry about getting 100. Okay, you don't need that. It's like, I, th I think it's like 65% or something like that is about, is about a five. So you don't need to be stressed about getting them all right. But it's great, it's great to go over them. But if you're struggling this year, don't stress about the real hard ones. Okay, you just make sure you're getting about half of them right and you're going to probably end up with a four you're doing pretty well. Um, still spend some time trying to understand them, but if it, they're really hard, don't get stressed about it. That's also while you're taking it too. When you're taking the practice exam, do not slow down on really hard ones that you don't think you're going to get. If you know that they're beyond your abilities, just go past it and keep moving. Okay, and then a procedural things. You've got to be automatic. And what I mean by procedural is that if you have a function that says f of x equals the square root of sine x, you have to know how to take the derivative of that. Okay, you got to know. If you don't know how to do the chain rule and taking the derivative, you're in trouble. Procedurals have got to be automatic. Or if I say, let's take the integral of sine of 3x. If you don't know how to take the integral of sine of 3x by using u substitution, then you're going to be in trouble. You've got to know those types of things and they got to be automatic. Okay. All right, look, that's it. We have finished the whole year. This is fantastic. Isn't it a relief? Feels pretty good to be done. So uh, not only are you going to rock that master check, you're going to rock the AP exam. The year's been fun. I'm glad we could spend some time together with you, even though most of you who are watching this, I don't even, I don't even know who you are. But uh, this is Mr. Bean signing off. I'm out. Maybe for those of you who are BC'd and you're still listening, I don't know why you're still on this video, but I'll see you guys in the next lesson. AB Kids, that's it.